shoulder dislocation. Shoulder dislocation is a dislocation of the glenohumeral joint. This is the glenoid cavity, which is part of the scapula. And the labrum is attached to the glenoid. This is the head of the humerus. So this is the shoulder joint. And when the shoulder dislocates, the labrum is torn. It is the anterior inferior part of the labrum that's injured during shoulder dislocation. The labrum reinforces the glenoid cavity and acts like a bumper within the joint capsule and the shoulder joint. The axillary nerve is the most commonly injured nerve during shoulder dislocation. Its injury will result in numbness around the shoulder area and weakness of abduction of the shoulder. The shoulder joint is the most commonly dislocated joint in the body. What are the types of shoulder dislocation? It can be anterior shoulder dislocation, which is the most common type. It's about 95%. And posterior shoulder dislocation is rare. It's about 5%. So let's talk about anterior shoulder dislocation, which is common. The mechanism of injury is abduction, extension, and external rotation. The arm will be in a position away from the body, often overhead, with the arm rotated backwards. This anterior shoulder dislocation is often found in association with other injuries, such as Bankart lesion. It is a labral tear and the greater tuberosity fracture or fracture of the humeral head called Hill-Sachs lesion. The Bankart lesion is a tear of the anterior inferior labrum of the glenoid rim. It is associated with a high recurrence rate of dislocation in young patients. The Bankart lesion can be fibrous or bony. In the elderly, dislocation of the shoulder is often associated with a rotator cuff tear as you can see here in this diagram. If the patient is unable to lift the arm after reduction of a shoulder dislocation, and if the patient is young, then the patient may have an axillary nerve palsy. But if the patient is old, then the patient probably have a rotator cuff tear. The head of the humerus may impact against the anterior inferior edge of the glenoid, causing a lesion of the humeral head, and it is called a Hill-Sachs lesion. Treatment of anterior shoulder dislocation will be immediate reduction. The dislocation is ruled out or reduced if the patient can touch the opposite shoulder. The second thing, immobilization of the shoulder. For how long? It's probably controversial. However, the usual time is about 7 days, 10 days. Surgery, usually done for patients with recurrent dislocations. How about posterior shoulder dislocation? It is known to be associated more with scissors or electric shock. It's often missed on x-rays. With posterior shoulder dislocation, there is lack of external rotation of the shoulder. This is a normal external rotation of the shoulder without posterior dislocation. The most reliable sign of posterior dislocation is lack of external rotation. 
you will find the shoulder locked in internal rotation and there will be lack of external rotation of the shoulder compared to the other side. A reverse Bankert lesion, a reverse Hillsax lesion, or a lesser tuberosity fracture of the humeral head may also be associated with a posterior dislocation of the shoulder. Axillary radiograph is the best to diagnose posterior dislocation of the shoulder. You can see two axillary views in front of you. The one on the left is a normal axillary radiograph without a dislocation. The one on the right, there is a posterior dislocation of the shoulder. How do we know that? Because the crocoid is anterior and the humeral head is going posteriorly. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.